tonight. Outlook is hacked in China. How to check Facebook from Mars and an app that will rid your world of toxic people. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 256 for Monday, January 19th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Invest in yourself for 2015. Lynda.com has thousands of courses to help you learn new tech, business, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. Today is Martin Luther King Day in the United States, but I'm still here because the tech news never stops. It doesn't. To start the show, let's look at how the tech giants honored Dr. King today. This year's Google Doodle on their homepage is the work of Boston-based collage artist Akua Holmes, and it features MLK walking arm in arm with fellow activists in Selma, Alabama. An article on Mashable pointed us to a Spotify playlist that includes King's most famous speeches. Microsoft.com, on the other hand, continued its relentless pursuit of convincing you to buy a Microsoft Surface instead of a MacBook Air. But their search engine, Bing, did feature a photograph of the statue homage to King from Freedom Parkway in Atlanta near King's childhood home. And while Apple.com is commemorating King with a photograph from the March on Washington, CNN reports that this is not without controversy since Apple does not offer MLK Day as a paid holiday to its employees. Companies that do, Facebook, Google, Twitter, Yahoo, eBay, HP, LinkedIn, Square, and Uber. Two newspapers reported over the weekend that the NSA has been hacking North Korean cyber spies since 2010. That was years before the North Koreans allegedly hacked Sony Pictures last year. Germany's Spiegel Online and the New York Times detailed an extensive program to crack the Chinese networks that provided North Korea's connection to the wider global internet and also infiltrate the Malaysian systems favored by North Korean hackers. NSA malware reportedly mapped and monitored networks used by North Korea's roughly 6,000 hired government hackers. Information gathered from the NSA hacking program is what gave the, USA, the, U, the U.S. government its certainty about North Korea's role in the Sony Pictures hack. But this also raises big questions about why the U.S. was unable to prevent the Sony hack. Once again, Microsoft is having a tough time in China. The website greatfire.org reported this morning that Outlook in China experienced a man-in-the-middle attack. This is where the hacker is placed between the victim and the victim's connections and then can log the shared information like emails, contacts, and passwords. Both the IMAP and SMTP for Outlook were targeted, but Outlook.com and login.live.com were not. The attack lasted for over a day, and greatfire.org reported that it has stopped. While the attack was happening, a pop-up warning would appear on the screen saying it could not verify the server identity. And of course, clicking continue would allow the attack to ta take place. Microsoft released a statement saying, we are aware of a small number of customers impacted by malicious routing to a server impersonating Outlook.com. If a customer sees a certificate warning, they should contact their internet service provider for assistance. Now, last week, I joked that it was my goal to mention SpaceX and Tesla founder Elon Musk in every single show. Fortunately, he's making this very easy for me. At an event in Seattle on Friday, Musk announced that he plans to build a, a network of advanced microsatellites, a kind of second internet in space to further the reaches of the internet. Now, we've invited Megan Geis, a staff editor at Ars Technica, to talk about the announcement. Welcome, Megan. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So tell us a little bit about uh, Musk's plan. Yeah, so Musk um, announced basically that he wants to put 700, um, maybe to a, 700 to 1,000 microsatellites in space, um, that he wants them to weigh 100, or 250 pounds or less, and he wants to put them in orbit around 750 miles above the Earth's surface. So um, people who've used the satellite, uh, sorry, people who've used satellite internet know that it can be a hassle, but... Um, traditional telecom satellites in geostationary orbit um, can be out as far as 22,000 uh, 22, miles from the Earth's surface. So we're talking an order of magnitude closer to the Earth here. 
Um, and he also um, mentioned, made some mention um, of a potential optical laser plan instead of using radio frequency so um, to connect to the internet um, down on Earth. So that's kind of broad brushes of, of the plan, although um, obviously nothing is set in stone and, and everything is sort of hearsay and, and hints from Musk himself. So the goal is, is it faster internet for people like you and me, or is it, what's his goal for with all these satellites? Yeah, um, his ultimate goal, I th I, well, I think Musk's ultimate goal is to start building um, infrastructure that could enable a communication or communication between the Earth and, and Mar a Mars colony. Um, he, uh, I, I think the other thing that sort of makes his plan justifiable is that it would, um, it would serve rural and underserved areas with internet mostly. Um, and, and that has potential to be a huge moneymaker too for whoever invests in SpaceX and in, in SpaceX itself. So, um, yeah. So he's trying to to get underserved people having the internet. It's not, he's not talking about satellite for everybody. I, I mean, I, it's, it's hard to say right now. I mean, the problem is I think when people think of, of satellite internet, they think of really, really slow internet, right. internet that serves you know, uh, bases in Antarctica. And, um, you know, I, I mean, if there's a lot of ifs in this particular plan and if if <laughs> all of it works out, it could be it could potentially be um, a network that you and I could use that would rival um, the late sea we experience on, you know, fiber. Um, maybe I, who, I, you, you can't really know right. this far out, but um but I think, yes, primarily, if you don't have internet right now, if you use satellite internet right now, um, this would be something that would be a huge boon to you. Right. So we can someday use it either here or if we're on Mars together. Yes, yeah, exactly. Okay, great. <laughs> when we're in the so <laughs> you published this article yesterday, but today there was more big news. There were rumors that Google might invest in SpaceX. Now, writing in the information, Jessica Lesson reported that one source close to the deal said the rumor was that Google had agreed to value SpaceX at over $10 billion. What information do you know about this? Yeah, so uh, we don't know a lot. Um, uh, basically, everything we know comes from the excellent reporting that Jessica Lesson did. Um, she did note that SpaceX hasn't um, raised a primary round of funding in many years, um, and Google has invested in a separate satellite internet company called O3B, um, and it poured you know over a billion dollars into that company. Um, what happened with that? Oh well, <laughs> um, so that's where it kind of gets interesting. Uh, another uh, in satellite internet company was announced to have received funding from uh, Virgin Group and Qualcomm earlier this week, and that uh, that company was called OneWeb. And the founder of that, um, Greg Weiler, uh, is, was actually the founder of O3B. When he left O3B to start his new um, satellite internet company, um, he took some radio frequency rights from O3B and sort of left Google <laughs> holding the bag in a way. Mm -hmm. So he... Uh, yeah, so so that's that's kind of what I mean. O3B is still a company, and, and they 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 I'm sure they have things going on right now, um, and they have a, a CEO that is different, um, and they're I, I I don't know the status of O3B at that point, but um, but basically Google is looking to invest elsewhere. It seems right. So so your piece talked about another crazy billionaire with a microsatellite plan, Richard Branson. Right. What's the difference between the his plan? and Elon Musk's plan. Right. Well, um, in a lot of ways, they're very, very similar. Um, so what, uh, what I think Greg Weiler wants to do is um, he also is hoping to do um, satellites, microsatellites, a network of 306, uh, sorry, 648 satellites um, that weigh in at 285 pounds instead of 250. Um, and the satellites would be put in orbit as also in 750 miles above the Earth, just like um, just like Elon Musk's plan. Um, he he was a little bit more forthcoming with certain details, I think, because he's already started um, O3B. So uh, his plan seems a bit further along. He he announced that he would have the network running in four years in 2018, um, or I guess that's three years, 2018. Um, 
And, and ideally, each satellite would cost $350,000. They would use an assembly line approach. Um, the difference, I guess, here is that um, is the, the approach. Um, one, um, Musk has said, uh, he sort of tackled this um, on Friday night, saying that his approach is more sophisticated, but critics say that, um, that, that Weiler already has rights to Spectrum um, in, around the globe. So, so he's closer to being able to you know, transmit an internet signal from a satellite um, legitimately as a company. Um, and uh, so, so I think the differences here are the, the scope and, and how, uh, I guess, how far along each company is towards achieving their, their plan. Um, a commenter on Ars Technica uh, earlier, um, I was reading, said uh, something very pithy. And they said, the difference between the two is that Weiler is looking down at the earth and Musk is looking at the stars. Um, I, that's very romantic. I think both are looking to make a lot of money. So, <laughs> right. Well, there will be more to this story. Thank you, Megan, so much. And you can follow Thank Megan you. on Twitter at Megan Geis. Um, I follow you. You're very funny, and you know a lot of a lot about this. So, if you're more interested, you can follow her. What are you work? What else are you working on? Oh, uh, working on a lot of things right now. Uh, we always at ours we're always doing telecom stories. So, if you're interested in telecom stories or space, we do a lot of space. So. Well, great. Thanks so much for coming Thank on. You. The fight for your right to be forgotten and an app that shows you how to unfriend. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. lynda.com is used by millions of people around the world and has over 4,500 courses on topics like web development, photography, visual design, and business, as well as software training like Excel, WordPress, and Photoshop. What's your plan for 2015? Do you want to take control of your professional life and find a better work-life balance? I recommend lynda.com courses like Monday Productivity Pointers, Managing Your Time, and Setting Up Your Mobile Office to Work From Anywhere. Whether you have 15 minutes or 15 hours, each course is structured so you can learn at your own pace from start to finish. All lynda.com courses are taught by experts who are accomplished professionals at the top of their field. Do something good for yourself in 2015 and sign up for a free 10-day trial to lynda.com by visiting lynda.com slash TN2. You'll get unlimited access to every course on lynda.com, including access on your iOS and Android devices, plus new courses as they're added each week. That's lynda.com slash TN2 to try it free for 10 days. Go ahead. I challenge you to learn something new in 2015. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. We reported last year on Europe's right to be forgotten rules. In a nutshell, Europe now requires search engine companies to allow European citizens to petition for removal of specific search results. When searching a person's name brings up information that unfairly stigmatizes the person, the search engines are required to remove those links. Google and the other search engines have been complying, but only for the European sites, not worldwide. In November, EU privacy watchdogs demanded that Google and other companies remove the results globally. And today, Google officially responded to that demand by saying that it will refuse to comply and will continue to enforce the right to be forgotten only in Europe. French and German interior ministers plan to meet tomorrow to organize a unified front in pressuring American technology companies to cooperate on counterterrorism. One of the demands will be for companies like Google and Facebook to delete terrorism-related content on their networks more quickly. The move is driven by the recent terrorist attack on France's Charlie Hebdo magazine, which was seen as an attack on free speech. While some governments, including the UK, France, and Germany, have responded with renewed intention to, crap in to crack encrypted communications and censor pro-terrorist posts and websites, civil liberties groups and tech companies are generally calling for the opposite, specifically a renewed commitment to support free speech. In other words, a showdown is coming. Stay tuned. $500 million a year is not too shabby. That's what Uber CEO says the company made just in San Francisco. He was speaking at a conference over the weekend in Munich and compared this to the taxi industry's estimated $140 million a year, which means that Uber made over 3.5 times more than all of the taxis in San Francisco. That is huge, and it's just getting bigger. And finally, do you have too many toxic people in your life? Maybe you do, and you don't even know it. 
TechCrunch reports today that a forthcoming app called People Keeper can show you all the people in your life that you should unfriend right now. The app apparently also hates vowels. It's spelled P-P-L-K-P-R. I'll be ready when that trend is over. And it connects to Bluetooth-enabled heart rate monitors included in your fitness or other wearable devices. And then it tracks your fitness response around certain people in your life. Biofeedback then uploads your emo emotional re reactions to the app to help you determine the people in your life who make you feel good and to weed out the people who don't. It can even delete those toxic people from your contact list. Although the app isn't available yet, the promotional material on their site promises that it will automatically manage your relationships so you don't have to. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.